I think it's clear that there's a need to address climate change by reducing carbon dioxide emissions. But carbon dioxide can be a resource, not just a burden. Carbon itself is the key building block of the world we live in. 12's technology can take that carbon dioxide from emission sources and transform that into materials and fuels instead of releasing it into the atmosphere. I'm Kendra Kuhl, co-founder and CTO at 12. I grew up in Kalispell, Montana. My dad was a wilderness ranger. Every summer he would be in the backcountry. When I was a young child, my whole family would go with him. I kind of spent the first few summers of my life in the middle of the wilderness. In high school, I fell in love with chemistry because it was all about how to make new things. When I went to grad school, I was really looking for new ways of doing chemistry to be more sustainable. And that's actually where I met Atasha. Tasha Cave. My title is co-founder and chief science officer. I grew up in Houston, Texas. I really wanted to be an astronaut. I really loved space, loved the adventure aspect of it. When I was in high school, I actually worked at Johnson Space Center internship program. I ended up going to graduate school at Stanford University, and that's where I met Kendra and Nicholas. I'm Nicholas Flanders, and I'm co-founder and CEO. I met Atasha at the Stanford Space Club. She was telling me about the research that she and Kendra were doing, working on the fundamental science of CO2 electrolysis. So exploring different catalysts and what types of products could be made from CO2. We decided to start a company to take that science and convert it into a device that could go out into the world at sources of industrial emissions and turn that CO2 into valuable products. We are focused on addressing these hard to decarbonize sectors, cement, steel manufacturing, glass manufacturing, for example. These industries inherently emit CO2 in their process. So we would take that CO2 coming off of that smokestack, we combine that with water, and then that stream comes into a reactor. They get electrified at the catalyst surface, and those catalysts will speed up this industrial photosynthesis that we're producing. And when that happens, they basically change their molecular structure and they become new molecules. For CO2 transformation to happen, the key ingredient is a catalyst. The catalyst is sprayed onto our membrane electron assembly that look like a black layer when we spray them on there. If you were to have a microscope, you would just see this metal particle. Millions of those small nanoparticles are the actual catalyst. The key breakthrough was actually in the reactor. Each of those reactors converts about the same amount of CO2 as 37,000 trees, but within something that could fit in your checked luggage. It's kind of like photosynthesis on warp speed as a solution to industrial emissions. And you might have a few hundred at a really large site. There's a whole suite of different materials and fuels that we can make from carbon dioxide. Jet fuel, working with the Air Force, internal car parts, Sunglasses, working with a fashion brand. If we were to replace petroleum and other fossil sources as a feedstock for materials and fuels and utilize carbon dioxide instead, we could address about 10% of the world's current CO2 emissions. In the future, carbon won't come from the ground in the form of fossil fuels. It'll come from the air, it'll come from biosources, and it'll come from waste processing. But we can close the loop on carbon emissions using carbon transformation. 